I, I think nobody could have looked at those scenes in the House of Commons and felt anything other than utterly ashamed. You've got 1.4 million people effectively kettled into a small area near Rafa, a ground invasion about to start. This was the opportunity for the House of Commons to speak with one voice to say that that ground invasion must not take place, that we need an immediate ceasefire and to back a serious proposition that sets out a political horizon and a roadmap to peace. And instead, we had utter chaos, uh, arguments about whether it was even possible to put the widest range of options before the House, the SNP walked out, the government withdrew. I, I just don't know what people looking at that who care about what's happening in the world, one of the biggest foreign policy crises of our times would make of what they've just seen tonight. But isn't the truth that that happened because of internal divisions in the Labour Party? You could have easily taken a principled stand and backed a motion that made it clear that a ceasefire meant both sides, that the hostages should be released. You didn't. You played politics and it ended in farce. Well, so, sorry, Krishna, but that's exactly what we did tonight. We put forward a proposition that was deliberately designed to attract the support of all parties in the House. You could have backed nothing... the SNP. Well, no, we couldn't have backed the SNP. What was because, wrong with it? As I explained to your channel this morning, there were significant problems with the SNP amendment. It didn't make clear that the ceasefire should be backed by both sides. It didn't set out a political horizon or route map, and it didn't command the support of the Conservatives either. It was written in a way that precluded the House from coming together around it. That's why we put forward our own proposition. And it is really difficult to see what the SNP and the Conservatives have to complain about tonight. They spent all morning telling your viewers on Channel 4 and on other channels as well that this was about Labour. They wanted to know what Labour's position was. We put forward a serious proposition that would have allowed us to rise beyond the party politics and start to speak with one voice about what is about to unfold. What in pressure Rafa, did you put on and the instead, speaker? And instead they didn't. I haven't put any pressure on the speaker. Well, and not you, you will have heard him. I mean your leadership. No, you will have heard him tonight utterly refute some of the allegations that are flying around on social media, particularly at the hands of Conservative MPs, one of which was made in the chamber, about meetings that he's had with various people from Labour. It's absolutely right that we make representations to the Speaker, that we want our proposition to be voted on. It's absolutely right, too, that those discussions happen and did happen so, so with did other Labour political parties. So did Labour tell the Speaker that the safety of your MPs was at stake if you didn't get to vote on your proposition? We don't, we don't have the right or the ability to tell the Speaker what to do. The House of Commons is No, but was that governed, a representation that was made to the governed, Speaker, that, that, no, that this was about security of, the, of MPs? I mean, he, he said himself tonight that he'd had representations from MPs of all parties, that there was a real issue with the safety and security of MPs. And in fact, the Conservative MP, Charles Walker, made a very moving point in the chamber, perhaps the only point of conciliation tonight, that there is a bigger problem with MPs fearing for their safety and security if they don't vote in certain ways. But the idea that the Labour Party can tell the Speaker of the House of Commons what to do is absolutely for the birds and I utterly reject it. We came to the well, House of Commons not, with a serious suggestion... proposition about the most serious issue of our times. This, is... this was our opportunity to unite around that and send a clear message to the Government of Israel that the ground this... invasion of Rafa must not go ahead. Yeah, but the suggestion and there's one, that is there's being one made... clear reason why that has not happened tonight. I'm pleased that our motion was accepted but there is a reason that didn't happen tonight. It's because the SNP walked out and it's because the Conservatives withdrew. And I just don't know how they're going to go can, back to their constituents. Can you categorically it. say that there has been no implied threat to the Speaker that after the next election his position would be in peril if he did not allow this uh, yeah, vote on course. a Labour motion? Of course. Because that, that's, that's the... The suggestion I mean, that's going around tonight. You know, I, I've served as a member of the House of Commons now for 14 years under various different speakers. You do not threaten the Speaker of the House of Commons. The Speaker of the House of Commons, as you heard from the Leader of the House finally, and the Shadow Leader of the House tonight, makes the rules, governs the debate, and is to be respected by all parties. We don't threaten the Speaker of the House of Commons, and frankly, it's absurd to sit in a debate tonight and suggest that that's taken place. The government didn't get to vote on their own motion because they withdrew it. The SNP didn't get to vote on their own motion because they walked out of the House of Commons chamber. The Labour motion was accepted tonight. I'm pleased that it was, but I think this was a shameful day, and we've missed an enormous opportunity 
to speak with one voice and add our voices to those who are helping to prevent an impending humanitarian catastrophe. Lisa Nandy, thank you for joining us.